Sonic the Hedgehog is the best game of all time. That's actually a lie. It's the fifth best game of all time after the other classic Sonic games, but it was super successful. So the publisher, Sega, decided it was time for a sequel. However, due to issues he had with Sega of Japan, Sonic 1's programmer, Yuji Naka, actually quit and later moved from the land of anime and cool swords to the land of reality TV and cool guns. In America, he joined Mark Cerny's new Sega Technical Institute, where along with Sonic 1 level designer Hirokazu Yasuhara, they would work on a sequel to Sonic 1 on the Sega Genesis. Meanwhile, in Japan, Naoto Oshima, the character designer of Sonic, would be taking over as director for Japan's own new Sonic game on Sega's new Genesis add-on console, the Sega CD. Hey! You still don't have a Sega CD? I don't know one person who had a Sega CD. Show them! <laughs> Want to see more? No. As a result, we had American and Japanese branches of Sega both working on separate Sonic sequels. The American one would be known as Sonic the Hedgehog 2, and the Japanese one would be known as Sonic the Hedgehog CD. Sonic 2 and Sonic CD, despite both being designed as the second entry in the Sonic franchise, took vastly different approaches on how their games were designed. In the case of Sonic 2, the designer said, Yeah, remember all the bad stages we made in Sonic 1? L let's not do that again. Marble Zone? Bye. Labyrinth Zone? See ya. Instead, they embraced stages like Green Hill and Starlight Zone. They got rid of all the waiting, all the slow sections, all the long platforming segments, and just made Sonic fast. Like, really fast. They even gave Sonic a new move, the Spin Dash, which lets him instantly get the ball rolling. This was done in response to common complaints that you would have to backtrack in Sonic 1 to get a running start sometimes. Sonic's horizontal speed cap was also removed, so there's theoretically no limit to how fast he can potentially go. To accommodate this speed, the level design is more straightforward, focusing on keeping the pace up. Just look at the map for Green Hill Act 1 compared to Sonic 2's first stage Emerald Hill Act 1. There are still alternate routes, but the emphasis on exploration is far less prominent. Even the special stages are faster. Sonic is actually running in these, not in some stupid pinball maze like in Sonic 1. STI did everything to make sure the game kept up its momentum. They even decreased the standard amount of acts in each zone from 3 to 2, making sure you never get tired of any one zone, keeping the game from getting dull. Just look at Sonic Sprite and Sonic 1 vs Sonic 2. Now, to the untrained eye, these look the exact same, but as a professional, allow me to educate you guys. If you look closer here, you can see that the individual pixels used on Sonic's fur aren't 100% the same. But I'm not gonna get too deep into it, but more importantly, Sonic 2 Sprite is more saturated. Color saturation is basically how intense the colors are in a picture. If a picture has no saturation, it'll be in grayscale. But if the saturation is turned all the way up, the more intense colors make Sonic Sprite pop more and makes it more lively. Heck, even the UI is more exciting. Sonic 1 just used a black background for its level title cards, but Sonic 2's got these red, colorful zigzag patterns. Look at the score counter in the top left. In Sonic 1, it was just basic text, but in Sonic 2, Italics. Of course, we can't talk about Sonic 2 without talking about Sonic's new partner in crime. Yuji Naka knew he wanted to have two-player gameplay before he even started working on the game. It was something that he wanted in Sonic 1 but couldn't due to time constraints, and thus, Miles Tails Prower came to be. There was actually a design contest held within Sega for artists to come up with Sonic Psychic, and eventually, Yasushi Yamaguchi won with his design for Tails. There's a two-player mode where you can race a buddy, but even in the story mode, a second player can play as Tails for a little bit of co-op action. It seems very trivial, but this was the first new character added to the Sonic game lore. It was our first chance to see what other weird animals lived in this world, opening up the possibility for more and more and more and more and more. Uh, basically, you can blame all the Sonic OCs on this guy. The other big addition to the Sonic Mythos is another Chaos mode, bringing the total count up to 7. If you collect 50 rings and reach a checkpoint, 
these stars will appear, and if you jump into them, you go into a special stage where you can get a Chaos Emerald by reaching the end of the stage with the required amount of rings. I hate these. This is the only thing I hate about this game. The 3D effect is cool, but you can barely see three feet in front of you! And if you go around a turn, you're gonna be blindsided by whatever's immediately after it. Though, if you manage to collect all seven, Sonic can become Super Sonic. If he collects 50 rings in a stage, granting him invincibility, better acceleration, and higher jumps. This is a great way to incentivize collecting the Chaos Emeralds because aside from the true ending, which is barely any different from the normal ending, there was no reason to get the Chaos Emeralds at all in Sonic 1. In Sonic 2, collecting them all gets you a sick power-up. Funnily enough, Sonic 2 actually continues the trend of lame true endings. Because in the true ending, Sonic turns into Super Sonic and flies away after falling from the destroyed Death Egg. However, in the normal ending, Tails actually swoops in and saves the falling Sonic. This is way more interesting than Sonic just saving himself. A actually wait, how did Sonic even transform into Super Sonic? There's no rings in the final level! A anyway, all in all, Sonic 2 is an improvement in almost every way from Sonic 1. There was actually a lot of turmoil during the development of this game due to cultural differences between the American and Japanese devs working on the game. And later with the production of Sonic 3, the Japanese and American staff of STI would work much more separately. While the teams couldn't really come to an understanding, they got the job done and <laughs> done pretty well I might add. To this day, Sonic 2 is still a great game and is a fondly remembered classic in the hearts of many. Now, with Sonic 2 being the success that it was, how does Sonic CD stack up? Well... Like I mentioned, Sonic 2 decided to get rid of the bad levels in Sonic 1, however, Sonic CD decided, hey, you know those bad levels from Sonic 1? Let's actually make them good! While Sonic 2 focused on speed, Sonic CD went in the complete opposite direction and instead focused on exploration. This was actually something Naoto Oshima did intentionally. He exchanged notes with the STI team over in America to make sure they were both doing different things. In Sonic CD's early stages, it was actually conceptualized as an improved CD version of Sonic 1 or Sonic 2, but eventually they decided to make something completely new. Oshima wanted a bigger world where you could discover new things on each subsequent playthrough. Mechanically, Sonic 2 is very close to the original Sonic 1. Sonic CD, on the other hand, introduces the time travel mechanic. There are these past and future signs spread throughout Sonic CD's levels. By touching them and running fast for a long period of time uninterrupted, Sonic can travel through time. So while the game is exploration focused, speed is still very much a factor in the game. Originally, Oshima wanted time travel to happen with a big Sonic boom that changed the level instantly, but the programmers told him, dude, we're in 1993. You're gonna get a cutscene and you're gonna like it. Time travel was actually an idea that was planned to be used in Sonic 2, but for one reason or another, probably time constraints, it was scrapped. Hilltop Zone is pretty infamous for being a palette swap of Emerald Hill, but that's because it is Emerald Hill, it's just a past version of it. Time travel would have been a part of the story, not a game mechanic, so certain zones would be set in certain time periods. Stages like Emerald Hill and Metropolis would take place in the present, while zones like Chemical Plant and Casino Night would take place in the future. Sonic was gonna start in the present, go back into the medieval times, return to the present now that it was ruined, go back even further to the ancient time, then go to the future, and then have a last battle in space. <laughs> Man, that sounds like a trip. Most of the stuff was cut from Sonic 2, obviously, but Oshima went all in on the time travel with Sonic CD. There are four time periods in each level, a present version, which is the normal variant, a past version, which is a lot more archaic and naturalistic in its design, a bad future version, which is a dangerous, dystopian, mechanized version of the stage, and a good future version, which is a peaceful, utopian version of the stage. By default, the future is bad, but if you go back into the past and destroy the evil Dr. Eggman's hidden generator, you can give that level a good future. This essentially means there are four versions of every stage making this game bigger than any other classic Sonic game. Time travel is such a cool mechanic that 100% fits Sonic and seeing how every stage is changed in both their visuals 
and in their level design in each time period is fun to experience. The best part of each of the four different time periods though is listening to the unique music. That's right, every stage has a unique theme as per usual, but every stage has four variations of that song for past, present, bad future, and good future. So no, Sonic 3 and Knuckles didn't start the tradition of having remixes for each zone. The present music is the bass version of the song, sounding like the house and techno music that was starting to become popular in Japan at the time. The composers for the game, Naofumi Hataya and Masafumi Ogata, actually decided on this style of music after being inspired by the stylish way UK club DJs and magazines were handling Sonic. The past music sounds more rustic, ancient, and pure, mirroring how simple the world was at the time. The composers deliberately use lower quality instruments to make it sound old and less sophisticated. What makes this even more apparent is that while all the other songs use CD quality audio, the past songs use the Sega CD's lower quality built MPCN audio sequencer, which wasn't quite as rich in sound. The Bad Future music is very sinister, distorted and electronic. It's super high energy though, so it's still great. The good future music just sounds very uplifting, peaceful, wholesome, and hopeful. If you want something happy to just chill out to, these are perfect. I spent a ton of time talking about the music because the game is called Sonic CD. Stupid. Despite being hit or miss in his games, Sonic always brings the tune. I can count the number of bad Sonic soundtracks on one hand after chopping two of my fingers off. I didn't really talk about Sonic 2's music, uh, but it's good, I actually like it a lot. Masato Nakamura, the composer for the original Sonic 1, returned to do the music, and he did just as good a job in Sonic 2 if not better than Sonic 1. But Sonic 2... I'm sorry, Sonic CD's music is just in a different league, no disrespect to the composer. I'm sure with CD audio, he may have been able to make something just as amazing too. Speaking of soundtrack, Sonic CD actually has two of them. The one I've been speaking about is the Japanese soundtrack, which was also used for the European release. However, there's also an American soundtrack by Spencer Nielsen and David Young. Like I mentioned before, the past music was sequenced with the Sega CD's built-in audio PCM, basically meaning it was hard-coded in, so replacing the music would be more difficult than just dragging and dropping a couple audio files. The US soundtrack is... Yeah, I'm not a fan. Some of the songs I do like are Title Tempest Present, Wacky Workbench, Bad Future, and the main theme, Sonic Boom. Due to the whole idea of finding the generators in the past to save the future, the game is a lot larger to emphasize this exploration factor. The level design is very open-ended with tons of branching paths. This style of level design is very hit or miss depending on your taste. Some people love the exploration focus, others prefer the straightforward speed of Sonic 2. Unfortunately, I fall into the latter category, so I'm not a huge fan of Sonic CD's levels. It can be fun to jump all over the place and find cool stuff, and not every level is annoying, but it can get pretty boring having to search for Eggman generators. And the level design can just get crazy and confusing at times. One thing I will say is I do appreciate them improving upon Sonic 1. Even though they made the levels more open and maze-like, they also allowed for more speed as well. Speaking of Sonic 1, they also brought back the warp rings that appear if you have 50 rings and reach the end of the stage. The special stages are different this time around. They made use of the Sega CD's more powerful graphics that allowed for things like sprite scaling and rotation to create pseudo 3D visuals. In these stages, you have to jump and destroy these UFOs scattered around the level before the time runs out. By destroying all of them, you get one of these seven time stones. Yeah, they're like uh, bootleg Chaos Emeralds. Since they're not Chaos Emeralds though, unfortunately you can't transform into Supersonic. These stages are pretty cool, I like them. Because the stages are fake 3D with 2D sprites and not real 3D, the graphics can throw off your depth perception 
making playing them a little finicky at times, but overall I do like these special stages. By beating all seven, you unlock this game's true ending. That's not the only way to get the true ending though. Like Sonic 1, there are three acts per zone. Act 3 is just the zone's boss fight, so it's more like 2.5, but whatever. If you manage to go back to the past and destroy Eggman's generators in the first two acts, you create a good future for that zone. If you make a good future in all seven zones, you can get the true ending as well. I always thought the idea that there were multiple ways of achieving the good ending was so cool. I mean, how many other games do you know where there are other ways of getting the best ending? Having two ways of getting the true ending means the game caters to multiple playstyles. If you want to explore and see the good future that you help cause in each level, <laughs> go ahead. If you don't care about all that stuff and you just want to breeze through another Sonic game, you can do that too and still get the true ending. I've spoken a lot about the true ending, but what is it exactly? Well, it's an alternate cutscene at the end of the game. And not like some stupid in-game cutscene, no. A full anime cutscene animated by Studio Junio and produced by Toei Animation. Studio Junio has worked on iconic Japanese series like Rurouni Kenshin, Ghost in the Shell, and even Dragon Ball Z. If you aren't a weeb though, then they've also done work on American cartoons like Freakazoid, Batman the Animated Series, and the Animaniacs. Not only are the endings animated, but the intro for the game is as well. The version of the animated cutscenes on the original Sega CD cut some things out, is very pixelated, and it uses a smaller resolution. But the full, original version, which you can see in the PC version of the game, looks amazing. The scene where Sonic is racing Metal Sonic in Stardust Speedway Act 3 is legit one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Oh yeah, Metal Sonic. That's right, I haven't brought him up yet, huh? Sonic CD introduced Sonic's first rival, Metal Sonic, a robot version of Sonic made by Dr. Eggman. Sonic has had numerous rivals over the years, but conceptually I like Metal Sonic the best because it fits with the original theme of Sonic. Sonic's core message is an environmentally friendly one. Sonic goes around destroying robots made by an evil inventor to save the cute animals he's kidnapped. Metal Sonic is perfect because he's a mechanized Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic has natural speed while Metal Sonic has speed gained from machines. Sonic is lively and full of attitude while Metal Sonic is a cold, lifeless, obedient robot made to kill. It's a figurative and literal battle between nature and science. While he's not as popular or influential as Tails, Metal Sonic has become a mainstay in the franchise, showing up regularly in both main series and side games. It's a shame he only appears twice in this game though. At the end of the game in the climactic race between him and Sonic, and once near the beginning of the game when he kidnaps Amy. Oh yeah, Amy. Normally I don't care about her character, her personality is just... girl. But in her first appearance here in Sonic CD, she's pretty harmless and I love her original design. Though saying this is her first appearance isn't completely true because the first time she shows up is actually in the Shogakukan Sonic the Hedgehog manga. This manga is really weird. In this series, Sonic doesn't actually exist. Instead, he's the alter ego of a hedgehog named Nikki. Nikki hangs out in the Hedgehog Town with Amy, Tails, Charmy for some reason, and his best friend Little John. Yeah! So, while Sonic 2 gave Sonic a sidekick and a super form, Sonic CD gave him a rival and a love interest. Ultimately, I think Sonic 2 wins in this category as Tails and Super Sonic have become far more important to the Sonic series as a whole, and as a rival, while Metal Sonic is cool, later rivals like Knuckles and especially Shadow have been way more impactful. With all things being said, Sonic CD is still a cult classic in the Sonic fanbase and it continues to influence the series to this day. Well, I think I've talked about just about everything I wanted to in regards to these two games, so I guess the big question remains, which one is better? In terms of gameplay, I'd have to pick Sonic 2. It's just a much smoother experience. Metropolis Zone is the only stage I outright don't like. Besides that, it's quick, straightforward, and snappy. 
Sonic CD has some really cool ideas, but it's not as polished or well designed. I think the weird level design can be charming and interesting at times, but it can also be really annoying. In terms of everything else though, I gotta give it to Sonic CD. The graphics, the music, the story, the world, the cutscenes, the whole aesthetic of Sonic CD is perfect. For that reason, if I had to pick one, I'd have to go with Sonic CD. Both games are very great though, and it was interesting to research on how both games came to be with the American and Japanese branches of Sega. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please click the like button. It takes less than five seconds and it really helps the channel grow. If you want to see more videos like this one, then please click the subscribe button too. It won't cost you a dime. Thanks guys, believe in yourself, and have a good one.